Welcome to another episode of Business Focus Live with me, John, where we talk about business-related topics as well as news from here and around the world. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get started. And we're back. So to start off with today's topic, so now many businesses have already slowly started to resume operations, open their retail stores, and get back to, you know, hopefully the way it used to be. But, you know, with the pandemic that's going on, it's been becoming more difficult as time moves on. And most especially for many restaurants, which is our first topic of discussion. So many restaurants, and not just any restaurants, Restaurant chains that are have been popular for so long have already filed for bankruptcy. Uh, and according to the article in CNBC, it states that uh, up to 30% of the many restaurants could permanently close because of the pandemic. So let's take a look at the article here. Where is it? There you go. So according to the article, it states here that, as mentioned, according to 30%, up to 30% of restaurants could close permanently, which is you know, not good news for many of us because you know, it's not just the business that are significantly affected, but many individuals, people's lives, and even families. So it's difficult to be unemployed in this difficult time. So how are you supposed to support yourself and your family? And also, it's all stated that according to s and that you know, as, as much as 15 publicly traded, you know, restaurant chains are more likely to default. And when you say default, you know, they're more likely, sorry, they're more likely to, you know, not be able to pay their debts to, how would you call this? Pay their debts to their creditors, to banks, and so forth, which is, you know, could be a reflection of two things, right? You could blame the pandemic, uh, because of the way things are going, so you, you know, who's to blame here? But on the other hand, when you think about it, you know, who are you, you to blame but the business themselves for putting themselves in this situation? What do I mean? If you were to compare with other businesses, how come some businesses are doing well in this difficult time, while others are having a difficult time, and to the point of, you know, closing businesses? Do you simply blame the industry or the individuals here or is it the one who makes the decision here that hampers the growth or to the point of the status of any businesses and as mentioned here uh, well-known restaurant chains such as uh, Chuck E. Cheese is one and we also have Garden Fresh is another uh, restaurant who's filed for bankruptcy and Le Pan Pito Den US Arm hopefully I'm pronouncing their names properly. And if you take a look here at the sales chart that was presented here, you can clearly see here, pre, pre-pandemic, uh, from June all the way to February, early this year, you can clearly see the growth from year to year or month to month is slightly marginal if you were to think about it or look at it closely, ranging from 3% all the way to 6%. So meaning what they're generating from their revenue is already you know, I won't say a large growth rate, but you know, a minuscule growth rate to compare with. That's why when a crisis like this occurs, it could severely hamper or you know, uh, cripple the business or the industry as a whole. And you can clearly see, for the past four months or so, you know, negative sales is in, has impacted the businesses. So how can they sustain that? You know, if this were to last much, much longer, we won't see much of the many businesses that have been established you know, for not just years, could be decades in the making, right? And as mentioned here, that the, according to the trade groups, the 30% could permanently close, meaning many of these businesses are at risk of, you know, not just closing businesses, but, you know, people's uh, or employees or staff members' 
uh, employment is at stake here. So meaning rise of unemployment, which is not good for the economy here. And obviously, the government has stepped in to do their part to help many businesses, such as provide the payment pay uh, protection program, which is to help transition from this difficult period. But obviously, you know, it's not infinite the program that the government is providing. So some have already availed this, so which is good for many businesses, but can only last for so long. So what do they do now? So, as mentioned here. It's not only the food industry that has been significantly affected, but also the entertainment industry. So meaning people are still hesitant to go outside because you know, it's not just the perception of you know, the safety of individuals at stake here, but you know, with the rising number of cases, meaning you know, is it really safe to go out there? So how can businesses uh, recover if people are not willing to go outside? So it only shows that Many businesses are, are vulnerable and, you know, we, businesses are being managed nowadays, you know, taking it for granted of the growth risk that has happened over the past few years. Not preparing for situations like this has severely affected many industries and, you know, the restaurant industry are not immune to this. So what can be done to this? Well, I guess, you know, only time will tell, but unless a solution can be provided with regards to the pandemic here. Businesses will continue to suffer for a short, hopefully a short period of time and not in the long run. Continuing. So speaking of food, continuing with our discussion. Now, even though businesses are, you know, having difficulty, you know, some are finding ways to stay afloat. And one such business is uh, or business or fast food restaurant here is Burger King. Now, obviously, they're going in the wrong direction. Instead of helping their costs to generate more revenue, they're only uh, in a scandal, uh, involved in a scandal involving, you know, offering expired food to their customers, which is a big no-no. So, according to the report here, uh, according to Rappler.com, uh, at uh, Consumer Affairs Program from Chinese State TV report uh, food safety issues at two Burger King outlets in China. So obviously Burger King has already apologized to customers after the said report was mentioned. Regarding food safety issues have long been a concern in China where quality of controls, scandals have fueled fears over the safety of food and anger at regulatory lapses. So this has happened not just uh, in two particular locations. So one is in Nanchang in central Jiangxi province, where expired ingredients to make its burgers, according to the said program. So another location is in Nanchang, uh, where in the date of expired chicken were replaced, so that you know people couldn't find out that they used expired expired chicken. So what did they think so that people won't find out that, you know, I mean, what's the thinking behind it of allowing or conducting these such practices so that, you know, to reduce costs in, in a sense. But at the end of the day, if they want to, you know, make more revenues, generate more revenues, you, know, you have to be considerate and, you know, considerate of the welfare of your consumers and you know, go beyond of not just trying to save nickel and dime your customers here. Continuing, now obviously many businesses have, have been tremendously affected. You know, restaurants, or like in, in our previous discussion, the restaurant industry has already been severely hampered. Many of them have already shut down, but on the opposite spectrum, you know, even though they are affected severely, employees are losing their jobs, having difficulty to support themselves, Guess what? Uh, even though businesses have filed for bankruptcy, uh, many executives from different well-known companies are being rewarded, given bonuses for steering them in this difficult situation. So let's take a look at the article here. So as you can see here, so nearly a third or more of the 40 large companies seeking bankruptcy protection during the pandemic 
executives within a month of filing their cases, according to Reuters, uh, are giving them bonuses uh, as much as tens of millions of dollars. So they are using this in terms of a loophole to be able to provide uh, so-called finance packages or bonus packages so that they would stay here during this bankruptcy period to help transition or restructure of such businesses. But you know, in terms of the optics here, this doesn't look well for any of the business here. People's jobs are at stake here. They're losing their jobs, their security, and so forth. And yet companies are rewarding said employees, or so not employees, but executives here, meaning for doing a terrible job, putting themselves in this difficult situation in the first place and rewarding them at the same time and then selling them off eventually. So, you know, obviously this loophole has to be closed off so that if businesses will file bankruptcy for bankruptcy for whatever reason, there should be a stipulation of sorts that, you know, companies should not be able to reward their executives, you know, giving them extra bonuses for whatever the reason here. Uh, you know, doesn't look well, you know, if you look at it in any picture. Now, the article is stating that could be a reason because uh, they want to retain those uh, executives so that they can transition, as mentioned earlier. And not only that, but their prospects look more dim because it's more difficult for them to look for other jobs. But if that were the case, look at the look at your core employees here, your rank and file employees. What about them? Are they not as important as well as your executives here? And this has already gone to uh, legislation and tried to close the loophole here, but there are a lot of you know, people against this, uh, uh, lo closing the loophole of sorts. So companies like GC Company is an example. Uh, wherein they have already closed as much as uh, 900 department stores and furloughed, you know, almost 80,000 employees, right? And yet they are they have approved nearly 10 million dollars in payouts uh, before filing for bankruptcy, as mentioned earlier. So it's not just J.C. Penney. Another example is Neiman Marcus Group, uh, wherein they have closed almost 70 of their stores and furloughed of almost uh, more than 11,000 employees. Yet they are still paying bonuses as much as four million to their chairman and executive or chief executive, uh, Geoffrey Van Ramdock. I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly. So it's not only those company. Another one is Hertz Company, uh, who have to terminate fourteen thousand employees. So that's a lot of employees losing their jobs, and yet they're paying them, you know, bonuses, senior executive bonuses for. Uh, as much as $1.5 million. And for another company, Whiting Petroleum Co Corporation uh, bestowed almost $15 million of extra compensation to the, executive, the executives before filing for bankruptcy. Now, does this sound fair? Obviously not. Is it good practice? Maybe, maybe not. But then of the day, is it for the best interest for the company to do such thing? If you're having difficulty sustaining your business, why are you rewarding said uh, executive? Why not use those money to filter it in other ways? Reduce costs, pay your employees, pay your debts, and so forth, right? Putting yourself in this difficult situation, meaning you did the poor performance in terms of steering your said company. And in this difficult situation, you know, the, the bonuses does not look, doesn't seem right for anyone looking in, uh, outside looking in here. Now, obviously, pre-bankruptcy pay, payouts are needed, right? According to the company, uh, because of potential stock awards are worthless, it would be impossible for executives to meet business targets if they were crafted before the economic crisis. Maybe they have to change the process of how they pay out the uh, bonuses and so forth, otherwise, you know, people would be in upheaval and civil unrest and so forth, right? Anyway, continuing with some tech news here. So, I'm sure this has happened for many of you where in, you know, let's say you're using your mobile phone or smartphone, and then you're in a hurry, you forgot 
to, to look at your phone and you see that it's already you know, almost empty. So you need to charge it, but you're in a hurry. So is there a way to fast charge your phone? Now, obviously, right now, there are uh, power bricks that can fast charge your phone. But again, you still have to wait 30 or even an hour or so to you know, fully charge your phone. And good news. Uh, Oppo right now is offering, can offer, or has already announced a fast charging power brick as much as 125 watts, which can, in theory, based on what they've shown, they can fully charge your phone in 20 minutes. That's very fast. So let's take a look here. Where is it? There you go. So according to Oppo, they're providing a 125 watt system as mentioned, which is the most advanced in terms of in the industry, which can typically charge a 4,000 milliamp phone battery in 20 minutes. So it can charge up 41% in five minutes, so less than, five, less than 50% in five minutes. That's a big, uh, big help for many people who are always in the hurry. And then in 20 minutes, it can be fully charged. So we have a video here, so let me show you here an example. Yeah, you can clearly see here. So it can charge very fast. So obviously they did the time lapse here. So it can quickly charge your mobile phone less than 50% in five minutes. And you can take a look at the temperature here. So, you know, they are able to maintain the core temperature of the mobile phone safe at a safe temperature. And you can see here in 20 minutes, it's fully charged, which is good news for many of us, right? If you think about it, you know, the uh, possibility, uh, the application for this is uh, seems limitless if you think about it. Obviously, right now, many companies are geared towards, you know, improving features such as the cameras, the aesthetics of your smartphone. But, you know, for me personally, I, I would prefer that a phone that I bought, I could use it for a very long time, not just an, in a day or two, but I could use it in, in one single charge for, let's say, several days or even a week, if that even... If, if that's even possible. But obviously, with the limitations of the size, the thickness of your phone, obviously we'd prefer it to be, to remain small, okay? So in this case, you know, good for us that hopefully they can integrate this with their uh, latest smartphone and hopefully other companies would follow suit and integrate this. Now obviously, you know, this is a key feature that, you know, Oppo is introducing, hopefully, Samsung can follow suit and uh, Apple as well can introduce in their uh, flagship mobile phone, which is, you know, that's something I'm sure many consumers are looking forward. And actually, one of the, I think I saw another video. So if you notice here, the power brick has already this capacity of charging your phone, you know, fully charging your phone within 20 minutes. I think I saw a gaming phone from Asus, the ROG uh, phone when it can be a gaming phone already, similar to how Switch maybe, similar to that. So it's portable, it's still a, hand a smartphone, yet you can play games with your uh, smartphone. So that's something to look forward in the future of how you know, uh, phones are going to innovate and provide several more features and so forth. Okay, so let's see. Ah. Next is, here's some updates. So I think we've already discussed this over and over with regards to the Wirecard scandal. We were in, it was reported that almost two billion of sales or cash amount was missing according to the auditing firm of uh, Ernst and & Youngs. And what's surprising here, there was an, was there an elaborate scheme? Was it falsified and so forth? But according to the latest uh, news report here, we have uh, Wirecard executive reportedly used Bitcoin to move funds to Russia. So meaning there was fraud, uh, I wouldn't say fraud, but there was transactions done, meaning transfer of money. So meaning was he able to filter almost two billion worth of amount? So according to the article here, so the chief operating officer who's been gone missing uh, John Marsalek Marsalek uh, reportedly used Bitcoin to move funds from Dubai to Russia. So using technology, you know, to launder money, I think you could call that. 
So according to the report, uh, he is currently in a private house uh, somewhere in Moscow under the supervision of a Russian special services. Now obviously there were earlier reports or documents was mentioned that he was uh, look, seen or reported to have been in the Philippines, which reports were said to be falsified, meaning uh, entry to the country was falsified as well as creating fictitious uh, bank accounts was falsified. So a, an elaborate scheme just to uh, show that he was present in said country. Now obviously, you know, there had been numerous investigations that had been done to find out whether indeed there was money transferred and was accumulated by said individual. So the more that we see the report here, it goes to show that you know, it seems to be more likely that ma some money was transferred, was lost, or whether that's you know, the entire amount of almost $2 billion. For more local news, so obviously we've been discussing how many businesses have started to resume their operation slowly but surely. But you know, for some, you know, it's still a struggle for many businesses. And one such businesses are you know, that are popular here in our country are malls, 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 malls. And according to reports here from the Trade Secretary uh, Ramon Lopez, foot traffic among malls are still at an all-time low meaning less than 50% of people are, are going to malls. Now, obviously, with the pandemic, with the right number, uh, rising number of cases, reported cases, people are still apprehensive, you know, going about, going out, buying products and services. That's why you can see clearly that the trend is showing that people are, you know, staying at home, preferring to buy uh, their things or necessities online, so to avoid you know, human contact on the outside world. And obviously, according to Mr. Lopez here, he mentions that uh, he was quoted saying, there is a general consumer spending slowdown. It started in March, of course, when most areas are under ECQ or enhanced community quarantine or were under an ECQ modified enhanced qua community quarantine, but are now, but were re reopening, we're seeing consumer spending slowly picking up, but definitely still way below pre COVID times. Obviously, based on my experience, I was able, I think, go out, I think, once or twice and, you know, going to a mall, you know, maintaining social distance is one thing, but, you know, obviously, not many people are going out, you know, with the exception of before the lockdown was, I think the initial instance where malls were open up, when people flocked all of a sudden, but, you know, with people going back to work, going their normal activities, Malls are significantly affected, not just the malls, but you know, the many businesses that rely on food traffic, people going, visiting their stores, buying products and services. So is there anything that could be done here? Because, you know, even if, you know, protocols dictate that you can you know, accommodate more customers, 50% uh, more customers, 75%, no matter what percentage, you know, the government allows people, you know, to go to establishment, but then at the end of the day, if there's fears or apprehension from, you know, from citizens like me and from the rest, you know, they'll be apprehensive going out unless there is some certainty or knowing that it's safe to go back out there. But as of right now, you know, there are fears growing and even growing steadily because of the number of rising cases that have been reported. So, you know, it's more likely that people will not go out rather than risk contracting the virus. So, unless government can contain the virus. Find a way to solve that problem so that people can start going back out again, going back their normal routines, you know, buying, buying stuff, doing normal activities like uh, early this year before this pandemic started and you know, happening 
Uh, otherwise, you know, it'll be a long time before people can be comfortable, even I, be comfortable going out and doing normal activities. So we can always be optimistic because, you know, uh, December is, is a, a few months away. So we want to have a, a joyous Christmas experience rather than, than being a sad one and so forth. And finally, for some uh, related news, so if you've heard of what happened to ABS-CBN, you know, the company that was shut down by the government, well, guess what? Who benefited from this situation? So there was a news report, uh, according to Business World Online, where GMA has already implemented or provided a TV box of sorts, and they call it the Afford the Box. So they plan to add more channels to the Afford the Box. Obviously, they have uh, a few primary channels that caters to GMA stations, but they also offer other stations. So obviously, according to the network, there's a high demand, growing demand for their TV box. Obviously, their main competitor is out of business as of the moment. So it's a good position for them to come in and you know capture the remaining customers who have been watching the other TV station and now shifting to another platform, which is the afford the box, so to speak. Now, obviously, according to the chairman and CEO, uh, Mr. Gozon, uh, it's selling like hot cake, uh, sorry, not hot cake, selling like hot pandesal, and you know they plan to expand their TV box or TV channels to one or more. Now, obviously, they've offered already several other channels. I was surprised to find out they are offering uh, a few more channels than expected, so let's take a look here what their, what's their main offering here. So I was surprised to find out they have a few channels at that. So apart from their main stations, GMA and GMA News and Heart of Asia, which is their primary tel uh, uh, programs, so you have also CNN Philippines, TTC, IBC Philippines, INC, you know, there's, there's a several, you know, uh, TV programs that, you know, people can start watching again. You also have Telejario, TV5, TV, Sh TV Shop, UNTV, and Zoe TV. So you can see here that, you know, this is a good, uh, a good business venture, you know, even though they came in late, but better late than never, so to speak, right? So it's a very good opportunity for GMA to take advantage of the given scenario and, you know, provide entertainment to the many customers that are watching TV all the time. And actually, they've already mentioned that they're providing this TV box at a very affordable rate compared to what, you know, the TV Plus was offering almost, I think, yeah, 1,500 bucks. Uh, the Afford the Box is offering uh, for as little as 888, so almost 900 bucks. So it's way cheaper. And what they're also mentioning that they're going to resume many of their live shows on a limited basis, but hopefully... Uh, later on, they'll get back to their normal programming schedule, which is good news for all viewers who like watching uh, GMA shows and so forth. So I think that's about it. So this finally concludes our live stream for today's discussion. So if you have any questions, you can leave your comments down below and I will get back to you. As always, ah, also don't forget to Yeah, you can't hear. Okay. Uh, as always, uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell icon so you can stay updated with the latest news as well as videos. Also, don't, thank you for watching. I'll see you again next week. So, see you next, next week. Same time, same channel. Take care. Let's cue in the outro. Where is the outro here? There you go. And stream, yes.